All right, ladies, this is Alex from My for Attraction 2.0, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about why men find your personality unattractive and what's causing you to have an unattractive personality. If you're noticing that men are not sticking in your life and they just happen to be always busy or you just happen to make a lot of guys lose interest, it might be because of your personality. So I'm going to show you guys why that is and also... I can't show you guys a lot a solution for it because it's a deep topic, but I'm gonna send you to the right video for it, all right? But this is more of a revelation and it'll help you. It'll actually be a solution in and of itself because it'll show you guys the things in you that's causing you to be such a bad personality. I was gonna say such a shitty person, but you know, I don't wanna kick you while you're really down, you know, so fucked up. Um, and this is something, for those who don't know, this is a, an excerpt about, the, about what the things that I'm gonna be teaching in my seminar this upcoming Saturday. So if you guys want to attend my seminar this Saturday, you can just go to the link below and you guys will be able to um, attend. It's a, it's a donation-based seminar. So you could donate just to attend. It's gonna be online and in person. I'm gonna be streaming it and I'm also gonna be there in person, all right? Um, what else? You, you, you guys should know about this. The topic of the seminar is gonna be more about how to transform your inner self in order to become more attractive. So I do teach some tactics, but this is more about how to work in yourself so that you can naturally have the personality that's attractive, all right? So it's more about how to rewire your brain completely so that you can actually be a woman who's actually attracted to God. And I'm not putting you down, but you know what I'm talking about, all right? So let's get started. Um, so the causes of a bad personality is simple. It's, it's, it has a few different causes. One, social conditioning. Social conditioning is one of the causes of a bad personality. Now, social conditioning is not bad because social conditioning is required um, in order to have a function of society. You need social conditioning. You need people who want to be um, the, the, the local janitor or the woman who wants to be the local housewife. You, you need that. You see what I'm saying? Um, but, what I, but the problem with social conditioning is that it's bad for the individual because for the individual, it means that they have to, they have to compromise their values. They have to compromise the, thing that's, the things that they want just for the society it's kind of like living in a um, communistic uh, kind of society not communistic but I think I'm wrong but like for example United States is an individualistic kind of society China is more communistic and I, I, I'm trying to I know when I'm saying that it sounds communistic but it's not but the point is, is that when you live in a society that that tells individuals to live for the whole what tends to happen is that people have to conspicuously and have to compromise their values so what happens is is that rather they don't go towards their goals, they actually just stay at a job just to feed their family. They stay at a job just to keep the family tradition. What tends to happen with that kind of scenario is that you grow bitter, all right? You let go of your fantasies and goals, and you feel like you have an unmet potential. What tends to happen with that when, when that happens to you is that that tends to jade you. You feel angry at the world, and you feel like you were wronged. And so that's going to affect the way that you perceive people. You imagine you're walking around and, you, and feeling like the world owes you something. You feel like the world stole something from you you're going to project a negative energy and what's going to happen is that the world becomes a reflection of who you are and it's going to begin to reflect that back to you because you're going to be activating other people's anger other people's uh, um, other people's suppression you see for example it's kind of like if i'm an angry person and let's say you know when people are in an angry mood they try to get other people angry you know they try to provoke people that's because they're trying to find what's in them in other people you see, so that's what tends to happen is that what's in you, your, 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 your anger towards the world, you're going to activate other people's anger towards the world as well. So you're going to be surrounded by those kind of people. And coincidentally, you're going to find yourself in constant conflict. All right. And that's going and that kind of conflict is what makes a personality unattractive because that conflict gets guys in and it puts guys in a very defensive state. You know, God damn, I'm hungry right now. I just got hungry. Um, sorry about that. I'm um, holding on to the past. That's another reason why you, you may have a bad personality and why it might be affecting your interactions with men. Um, holding on to the past rewires how you see the present moment. You see, um, it rewires your emotional circuitry where you see threats that are not even there. For example, you hold, let's say, for example, let me give you a very simple example of how, what it means to hold on to the past, right? Let's say you had a very long day at work. You come back from work and you have kids, right? You had such a long day at work, but you're home. You shouldn't be thinking about work, but because the day at work was so, um, it was so stressful. You come home, and you're like, fuck, I got to go back to work tomorrow. God damn it. And your kid is playing with you. He's in front of you, playing, playing, playing. But in your head, you're like, fuck, I gotta go back to work. Or fuck, today was such a long day. You don't have to think about that. You're, you're in the moment. There's no need to think about that. But you're holding on to the past. 
right? And so what happens? Mommy, play with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mommy, pay attention, motherfucker. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 kid. Sorry, kid. No, 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 no. You see, so it's kind of like you're allowing the past to hold on, to, to dictate your present moment situation. So you're not enjoying the time you're spending with your kid. You're not, you're not putting all of your attention to it. And what's going to happen is that the kid is going to feel that you're not really there, even though you're there. You see? So how do you do that? Well, the problem is that you're not fully there. If you would just feel all of your sensation, notice, bring all of your attention to the physical sensation of your current experience, notice the different sounds in the room, notice the different colors around you, notice how your body feels, notice the space in the room, suddenly the attention goes from your mind, the past, to the present moment. You see, you focus on the present moment. That's how you let go of the past because in the past, when you were thinking about what, how bad your job was or how you gotta work tomorrow, when you were focusing on your experience, you weren't really there, you weren't really noticing the details. But now, you, you take the attention from your thoughts, from the past, what happened at your work, from what you're gonna do tomorrow, and you bring it to the sensations, to the physical sensations of the present moment. And that allows you to, to let go of the past. But a lot of women don't do that. They do that at a, at a level where you get, you, you get um, dumped or you get cheated on and you bring it on to the next relationship and you unconsciously think about that. You're unconsciously thinking how he's gonna hurt you. You unconsciously think about how the last guy hurt you. So when you're talking to the guy, you're not seeing him, but you're seeing him through the layers of your past. And, that's, and that causes you to see things that are not there so you expect him to break up with you. So suddenly you start acting suspicious even though he didn't do nothing. You, you it's, it's, suddenly you start you, you you don't really show who you are because you're afraid that if he really that he might reject you, you see, and that creates a hindrance in your relationships. Um, putting others ahead of you in the belief that you're doing the right thing, that's another cause of causes of a bad personality. You believe that in order to get people to like you, you need to do things for them. So what happens then? That means you stop relying on your true personality and you start relying on things. You don't rely on you, you rely on the things that you believe makes up you. You see, you start giving them experiences. If you're a kid and you believe that in order to gain friends you need to have weed and then you suddenly, you, you start having weed just to smoke your friends out. And when you don't have weed, you're like, oh fuck, I need to get weed so that my friends can like me, right? That becomes who you are because you don't have nothing to give. There's no true essence to you. At least you believe that you don't have it. So you start substituting you for an object that can also go in, in your looks. So it doesn't just be weed. It could be your, your, your the body that you have, the beautiful body that you, you may have. You could just present that as you. So you hide yourself underneath that layer of, of, of skin. That can also be in terms of, like as a guy, the money that you give to a woman, right? Because you have nothing to offer, you start offering the external. And what happens is that you hide under that. You see, and when you feel like they don't like you, you try to give more. And that creates more fear and pain inside of you. It, it, it creates self-hatred and that's a problem. Because that self-hatred comes in the form of self-talk. That self-talk creates an image and that image begins to become who you are. The image of this person that you keep telling yourself who you are. The last one. Um, to, um, the, okay, another cause of the bad personality is when you feed... When, when, when you have the, an addiction to constant stimulus, when you feed, so essentially, a bad personality comes when you derive your sense of self from the external world, right? So in order to be happy, you need other people to tell you how awesome you are. So that, what happens then? You depend on people to make you happy. You depend on people to, to, to tell you who you are. For example, if you're a basketball player, and you have a very shitty personality, in order for you to believe that, in, in order for you to feel good, you need to embarrass someone. So you, oh, that's all you look for. You look for the challenge so that people can see you and they say, wow, he's such, an, he's such an awesome basketball player. Boom, validation. They're telling you who you are. He's such an awesome basketball player. And you're like, fuck, I like this. Let me play more basketball, right? And so that begins to feel you, that, that begins to become you. So in order for you to be you, you need to do more of that one thing that people validate you on. What happens is that behind that, because you're using an external thing, you're not working on yourself. 
You're not working on the relationship that you have with yourself. So what happens? That in order for you to feel good, rather than looking inside yourself, you look outside yourself for things. So you start working to get those reactions. You're an awesome person, great personality, so that you can feed on that and you can feel better and that feeds your self-image and you begin seeing yourself as a better person. Little do you fucking know that you could just do that on your own without needing any, any, any validation from somebody else. But the key to that is to starve yourself. You have to starve that need for validation. That means you gotta go, you gotta allow yourself to experience that need and that's a whole totally different topic. But that's one of the reasons why you have a bad personality because you consistently pinging on people about what you should do, the right things and the wrong things about what you should or should not do. And so your personality becomes, um, becomes hindered depending on the limits that people place on you. So you start living for other people, not yourself. And people feel that, they sense it, and they don't want that. They want someone who thinks for their own, not somebody who thinks for other people, not somebody who thinks depending on what, other, on, on what the herd is doing. You gotta be your own individual. And in order for you to do that, you gotta, you gotta detach yourself from the matrix and allow yourself to experience whatever it is you are fearing to experience through starving that need for validation, allowing yourself to feel needy without doing nothing about it, right? And that's a whole totally different topic, but these are one of the causes of a bad personality. A lot of the times, it's not about how you look, especially as, as you grow older. Who knows, man? I don't know, man. I'm young, right? I, I don't know why, how the psychology of, of, of how older people are attracted to each other. I don't know, right? I, I could just speculate from, from, from afar. But what I know is that as you get older, having mental stability, ment being able to regulate yourself, being able to control yourself, and being able to find happiness from within is vital and extremely important, more important than almost anything else. And if you don't have that, if you continually um, draw on other people's energy for happiness, for self-esteem, you're going to find that people are going to be ignoring you a lot more the older you get. And what's going to happen then? You're going to go crazy. You see what I'm saying? Um, anyways, this is Alex from My For I don't know if you guys want to attend my seminar, just go to the link below. Donation-based seminar. You don't have to attend. You can just go in person, all right? Have a good day and bye-bye.